it's important to recognize that Ukraine does have a track record uh, of conducting free and fair elections that meet international standards. So despite the bad reputation of elections in Eurasia, uh, not since uh, then Prime Minister Yanukovych tried to steal the presidential election in 2004, prompting the war's revolution, since then Ukraine has successfully conducted parliamentary presidential elections which have been, which have been free and fair. It knows how to do this. Second, I think the stakes are particularly high for this election. Uh, clearly, there's been a Russian strategy that had been aimed at disrupting the May 25th election. We've seen President Putin take a tactical step back uh, uh, to most likely avoid the sectoral sanctions that are looming uh, if Russia were to disrupt uh, the election. And so I think the challenge is, does the East, does the South participate in this election? And is the election able to refute the Russian allegation that Ukraine has no legitimate leadership? Um, the Donbass, uh, Donetsk, Luhansk represent about 14% of the population. Yet the separatists really only control one town and some key buildings in, in those two key cities. And so I think that's one of the key questions of wide turnout across the country, but particularly in the East as well, which is looking more possible now. The front runner right now, Petro Poroshenko, is drawing support from across the country, east and west. In the past, if you look at presidential election results, they essentially look like a census. They look like a division between east and west when you look at the electoral map. Uh, candidate Poroshenko, who is riding high in the polls, he has an opportunity, a chance to demonstrate that he's won election across the country in a way that diversifies his base, diversify the votes in a way we really haven't seen a president of Ukraine elected since its independence. And I think that in and of itself would be a significant step forward for Ukraine in itself.